Good morning. Isn't this a fabulous? So that is Guiso Beach behind me in Portugal. So let's begin with putting our hands together and doing three long alms. Make sure remember that your alm comes from here. And so it's the lowest that you can do it. The vibration is what opens up the energy channels. Oh. 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 We are going to start this morning. With a little bit of breathing exercises, keep yourself balanced, put your seat bones on the floor. And remember, you can hold your hands like this. Uh, the reason for doing that is that this becomes a center point right here. And you use your thumb and the fourth finger to switch between nostrils. So you're going to breathe in with your left nostril for the counts of five, hold for five, and then breathe out through the right nostril for five. Then you breathe in through that same nostril, the right nostril for five, hold for five, and breathe out for five. So let's begin. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out, right nostril. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in, left nostril. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in, hold, breathe out, breathe in, hold, breathe out, last round. Breathe in, 
Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. And breathe out. You'll find that you can either breathe in or breathe out of one nostril easier. And that's the fascinating thing about yoga is that you have two sides of the body, two sides of the brain, and you're going to be always have a tendency of using one or using the other. Remember that the right side of the body matches the left side of the brain. That's the masculine, the more Nike go for it side. The left side of the body which is oftentimes underused in the Anglo-Saxon culture, is the receiving or the feminine is connected to the right side of the brain. And you're going to find that even as you breathe, you breathe out of one nostril or the other. And so when you're doing these breathing exercises, you're trying to put a balance so that you become centered within yourself. And you can have, because you'll be going one nostril or the other, my left nostril is more closed probably because I'm giving this lesson to you. So I'm in part of the more masculine or out, which means my receiving is less strong. Probably by the end of the yoga, my receiving channel will be opening much more. So once again, yoga is a way of creating a mirror, using the body to be a mirror with yourself so that you can better understand yourself and also better understand how your uh, mental game is in your head okay so we're going to start also notice when i get up this is also a yoga pose with a sun salutations that you're doing the easy ones this time all right uh, i'll be doing 10 of them so breathe in breathe out left foot back look up Back, knees, chest, chin on the floor. Cobra. Dog. Right foot forward. Look up. Left foot forward. Breathe in and breathe out. Down, down. Now, oopsie. Left foot. Back. Look up. Plank, knees, chest, chin on the floor. Cobra, dog, left foot forward, look up. Right foot forward, roll up, roll back, and down. Right foot back, look up. Plank, knees, chest, chin on the floor. Cobra. Dog, right foot forward, look up, left foot forward, roll up, roll down, left foot back, look up, right foot back, plank, knees, chest, chin on the floor, cobra, plank, left foot forward, look up. Right foot forward and roll up. And then breathe out, roll down. Right foot back, look up. Left foot back, plank. Knees, chest, chin on the floor. Cobra. Dog. Right foot forward, look up. Left foot forward. Roll up. And roll down, breathe out. Three, left foot forward, back. Right foot back, plank. Knees, chest, chin on the floor. And go smoothly into cobra. Then the door. Right foot forward, look up. Left foot forward. Roll up. Roll back down. Left foot back, look up. 
right foot back, plank. Knees, chest, chin on the floor. Cobra. Dog. Left foot back. Right foot. This is four. One more. Now, right foot back. Look up. Left foot back. Knees, chest, chin on the floor. Cobra. Dog. Right foot forward. Look up. Left foot forward. Roll. And down. Left foot back. Look up. Right foot back. Knees, chest, chin on the floor. Cobra. Dog. Left foot forward. Look up. Right foot forward. Up. And come into Tadasana or the mountain pose. So you're just letting your energy settle down into your feet. The more in a connection with your feet that you have, the more stable you feel. And in the morning, your energy is very, very open and wide. So you want to keep that open, that wideness, but in your body so that you become embodied. And now we're going to go down by pulling your hands up. And we're going to go into the jackknife. I'm going to turn so you can see what I do. With the jackknife, I go back. Your legs are straight with the jackknife, and you want to keep your back straight. So you look toward your, between your fingers. That is the jackknife. And breathe. From the jackknife. Now just let your body round it back. Rest. Let's you down here, up, and bring your knees to the ground. I'll turn also to the sides, so and you can see there are two poses to stretch your feet. Your feet are the connection to the earth. This is the more masculine pose. This is the feminine pose. If either of these are comfortable, uncomfortable, put a pillow under your feet. You should never be uncomfortable in the pose. So this is how I am in this pose, All right? While you're sitting in this pose, we're gonna be doing the cow right here, the right hand, rested on the back. I'll turn up so you can see what I'm doing. Like this. My left hand, I position. Now, you do it the opposite. Now, the left hand side. It helps if you stretch your arm up over your head first and then pull it back. It's called the cow, but I prefer to call this the osteopath pose. 
And osteopaths said, this is something you should do every day. And what it does is it does open the heart and the lungs so that you can breathe easier and you relax. And you breathe up in the upper part of the body. We have a tendency of only breathing in this part. It's called the overachiever's breath. And what you're wanting to do is you bring your breath lower and also upward. And so it becomes more full body. Why? Because this also helps you the body. Now flatten your feet. So now my feet are flat. This is the opposite pose. You can either stay like this. If this is comfortable, the next is to put your fingers down. Do this to the sides. So you can see. Back straight, and you raise yourself. Following, if you can do it, it's that. And breathe. Yes. Very good. Good. Now bring your bum to the left. Your feet are on the right. Take your right foot and bring it over your left. If you have problems with your knees, straighten your leg. There's nothing better about having your, your knee bent or your leg straight. What you don't want to do is that if this, because your hips are tight, that you're sitting on the side and trying to get into the pose. That's not the point. The point is to be straight. And the reason of having the knee bent is just because it gives an additional stretch if you're already flexible. So you have to learn to work with your own body here. And guaranteed suffering is comparing yourself to someone else. Okay, holding on to your, your leg, just resting firm. Take your left hand, rest it around your leg, turn like this so you can see. Just it around your leg and pinwheel your arm around to the right and look back. If this is comfortable as it is, you can take your left arm and use it as a lever against your foot. It gives you an additional stretch so that you look back. You want to pull your body up as much as you can while you're looking back. And always breathe while you're doing this. It's in the exhale that you'll get the additional stretch. Good. Now we're going to go into the noble pose. The leg that is up, the right leg, slide it down, okay? So that your knees are over each other. If this is comfortable, your knees might be up like this. That's all right, doesn't matter. But you're wanting, the, the focus is trying to get the knees as much as they can over themselves. If you have your hips are open, the full extended pose is like that. I, I doubt you'll be able to do that. It's a little bit more extended, but be where you're, where you're comfortable. If you wanna bring that in like this and hold on to your feet. That is the pose. It's a very, it's called the noble pose because you feel noble when you are in it automatically, it straightens your body up and breathe. Now we're going to switch legs. Go. Now I have my left leg down, my right leg. I'm sorry, my left leg is pulled up, okay? And I'm gonna do the opposite twist. So I've got my right arm now around my left. I'm gonna turn so you can see me. My right arm is around my knee, my left arm now pinwheels. And I'm looking back, if this is comfortable, 
you can put it around and use this as a lever. Raise your hand to the sky and you lever yourself up and look back. You should feel the twist in your lower back. Doesn't that feel good? Ah, you might even feel some cracking of the back. You're wanting to constantly put movement into your spine and into, I cannot emphasize how much putting movement into your torso is important. So now I have my knees over each other into the opposite of the noble pose. Okay, so I've got my hands on my feet. I'm looking forward. And now you look forward and just breathe. Good. Bring your, hand, your feet together and face forward with your feet out. First thing we want to do, put your hands back, look forward like this. Your hands are facing forward. That is the pose you want to lower your shoulders and pull them back. You'll have a tendency to be rolling up. You want to pull yourself up. This already takes the muscle, which is your core here. Okay. While you're like this, crunch your toes and stretch. Crunch, stretch, crunch, stretch. Crunch. Say hello to your feet. I also emphasize a lot of the feet because we never see them. This is our... These feet are our connection to the earth. It is so important to be able to put your attention onto the feet because that is what gives you a stability in life is when you're grounded and you're resting on the earth. And if you think about it, we're always wearing shoes and the bottoms of our shoes are oftentimes rubber. And a rubber with electricity is, of course, it stops the electricity from blowing. So we're always walking in disconnect with the earth. So if you can... Always try to walk barefoot. Try to connect your feet onto the earth. Try to receive the energy, literally the ions and the energy up from the earth into yourself. It's like recharging a battery. And so that's why I emphasize oftentimes the feet. <laughs> okay? So after you've done your little crunch and your stretch, now you're going to do the fuscus, which is your feet kissing each other. Okay? Bring them forward. That normally is easier. Okay? And then... And when you're doing that, the energy from you, it comes out. That's why it's normally easier. Now, the interesting thing is now do the opposite. So the main toes are forward, and it's the second toes that are touching. That's oftentimes uh, much more difficult. That brings your energy in, and it folds it up into yourself. So you do fuscus, repeat kissing each other, and then back. This took me quite a while to be able to actually do and to feel what was happening with bringing in my energy into the torso, into the core of the body. Okay? And you can think of it by using the big toes. The big toes are the equivalent of like the spine, all right? So what happens is the foot bends around the spine as it twists, okay? And you might have to spend some time actually even trying to figure out which, how to move each toe. That's okay. That's normal. Okay. This is an area of the body that we don't spend a lot of time with. Good. Okay. That's all right. Now bring the feet forward and then push them back. And then forward and then push them back. While they're also pushed back, you can either use a belt or you can use your hands, bring your hands forward, and now you're helping keep your legs straight. If this is too much, that's okay. Use a belt. I don't have a belt with me in Portugal. I have my scarf. Use anything you need to so that you keep your you can keep your back straight. 
Okay, that's really important while you're moving forward. The reason you're wanting to keep your back straight is that the emphasis is here in the body, not here. This is where you're wanting to put movement. And the reason if you don't have a movement here, right, is because you're not present here. It's like you're hollow on the inside and the muscles around have to tighten. This is why we have a lot of stress in this area. Okay, so, but by having, like moving and putting the flexibility into this area, you're fine that you're gonna be able to come down much easier, okay? So bring your hands forward, all right? And stretch, and keep coming forward. Good. Next, put your fingers like this. Bring them around the front toes. Okay. Bend forward. And where you can, the focus is trying to put your, your elbows on the ground. If you don't do that, that's okay. The importance is if I turn to the side, you'll be able to see much more that I can do it rounded. That's not the point. I'm wanting to put the flexibility here, okay, as I'm moving forward. That's why I'm looking forward and not looking down here. Now we have our foot on the right, flatten it. So you're facing forward, turn, make sure that your sit bones are on the ground. Stretch yourself out of your body and bring yourself over your foot. Even if you're holding on to, once again, if you can do it, if you, have, if you hold yourself like that, that's okay. You know, it doesn't really matter. The, Getting into the pose doesn't matter. It's it's where you're stretching and putting the awareness that matters. Okay, so that you're moving your awareness all the way through your body. This is all about embodying yourself. Okay. You can also move like this if you want. Find that flexibility. Okay. And then after you've done the stretching forward, moving yourself forward, then now round your back and just rest over your leg. Come up again. Bring your leg up. Take your right hand. Bring it on the inside of the leg, okay, inside, and twist it. The movement is this, okay? You're putting movement into your shoulder. As you bring it back, and I'm holding my hands in the back, and I'm resting over my leg. These are all stretches for the lower back. Okay. And when you're coming up, now this is another core exercise. You try it either by putting your hands down and you're lifting yourself up. Okay, that's the first step is doing that. If you're comfortable doing that, then the second is you can also hold onto your foot like this. That's number two, and that's number three. And you breathe for five. So this is the muscles in the, and you're holding yourself up via the upper thigh muscles and your core. Probably can feel that. This is very good for skiing, by the way. 
Now let's switch from your left leg up. Remember to always have your awareness in your right foot. Don't let it drop like this, okay? Good, and drop it down. Position yourself, okay, comfortably. Raise yourself out of your body. Remember to you put the stretch into your torso. And come forward. Okay, you can use your belt if you want to. And come forward. Okay, stretching the lower back, lower back. After breathing for five, now rest over your leg. You probably feel the muscles of this is the sciatica. The sciatica is oftentimes a place in the body. We hold emotions in our body. You know, there are places where we hold fear, anger, these are anger points. Fear is often held in the solar plexus. Um, also, fear or connection to the earth. The sciatica is also anger. Is oftentimes that's where that's held. And when you're wearing, especially women, when they're wearing high heels, the sciatica also shortens. And so it doesn't get the stretch that it needs, but also you don't get the connection with the earth that you need. So it's especially important in all of our lives to keep this sciatica flexible, or you will have problems when you get older. All right? I am 63 years old, and it's, it shows I'm more flexible in my body now than I was in my 30s. This is when I began yoga and doing a lot of other body work. And so it, the, the, the idea that your body becomes less flexible with age is not true. What happens is that we become less flex, we have become less flexible in our minds. We start thinking the same way. And it's just like digging ruts, you know, into the neuro pathways of the brain. You keep thinking one certain way and it's reflected also in the body. So by moving and stretching and opening the body, you're also, new. It's, a, it's a physical way of opening these neuro pathways in the brain because it's done from the body as opposed to you're trying to change your head, trying to think in a certain way. You can't use the head to be able to fix the head. If you use the body, then it's a more uh, a permanent change with the head. You'll, you'll, you will find that by bringing flexibility and strength into your body, you'll be bringing your flexibility and strength also into uh, opening up your, your, your brain, which is what all of us want to do. Okay, so once we're stretched like that, bring your left leg up. Your left arm, bring in front of you and twist it around. Okay, this is the movement here of the shoulder. And if you can, you hold on to your hands and rest over. You can you can let your left leg just drop and you rest over your knee like this. And now as you're coming up, we're gonna be doing now the core strength so remember the first, see if you can hold yourself up. I just, if this is all you can do, that's absolutely fine. With your fingertips, hold yourself up, okay? Bring yourself up like that. If that's okay, you can rest forward and hold yourself up, whoop, there. By the foot, if you can do that, next step is up like this, okay? Oh, I can feel that in my arms. Okay, good. And then bring your feet together. Good. And do the butterfly. Just rest. Good. By butterflying, you're opening up the muscles here. Make sure that you don't do it like this. You know, don't don't bend yourself forward. I'll twist it, you can see it. You don't want to bend yourself forward like this, trying to bring your legs together. If you have your legs more open like that, but you can keep straight, 
that is better for the pose. Why? It's because you're trying to open up the muscles here in the lower back. This is what releases this area here. So wherever you can, make sure using your hands to hold yourself up, okay? So instead of rolling up like that and come down. If that's comfortable, they call it reading a book. You're opening up your feet. So it's like reading a book and you bring your feet towards you. That's another stretch. Good. Right. Now you're going to stretch your right leg out. You have your, your left leg out, sorry. Take your right leg and raise it over your up like that. Keep it straight. Once again, if this is too much, take oh, ears. You can also hold yourself like that. Okay. Show you. Because you want to keep your legs straight. Okay. So if you keep your legs straight just by holding this, that's better. Not or like this, but you want to keep your back straight while you're doing that. So if you can keep your back straight and you have to hold yourself like that, that's fine too. And you're bringing your leg slowly toward your nose. Good. Now the next, bend your leg, put your right arm under your foot, your leg like that. So you're just holding the leg. Your leg is resting now. Okay, that's the next step. Now the next, you use your hand like a lever. Okay, under my foot. And I'm trying to bring it over my shoulder. If you're only here, that's okay. You have to start somewhere. But slowly, you'll find that these are all hip openers. I'm working on the hips today. Okay. You want to bring it over your shoulder and look forward. Good. And don't worry, you can always feel like you can move. If you need to move or you can rock the hips to loosen it, do that. Remember that yoga was invented by people who were, the Indians are very, very flexible. And so therefore they created something which is very rigid. Um, we are much more rigid in our bodies. And so if you need to have a movement or flexibility, do not do that. I find that the body today needs to move. Once you're comfortable with this, now take your left hand. So you're holding your foot. And now I'm holding, I'll turn this way so you can see me. Like this. Okay. Right. So I'm now resting my foot. Mm -hmm. And then finally, taking my left hand on my right foot, resting my right hand down, you hold onto the foot where you can. The full extended pose is looking over your left shoulder and back. And then resting. And what you're wanting to do is open yourself up. Okay, opening up the hips. This is an advanced pose. Eventually, you hold it behind your leg, behind your head like this, okay? And come forward. Also, you can come back. Like that. But don't worry, it happens slowly. And bring it back down again. Okay? Now, take your left leg, straighten. Once again, 
Don't worry if you need to straighten it. Hold onto your leg where you can. Look up towards your toes. Bring it slowly towards your nose. You're moving and you're opening your hips here. Okay, all right. Then rest the leg. And the focus is to try to bring the leg so it's resting on your shoulders, okay? And you're using your hand as a lever, just like that. So it's resting. I'll go to the side so you can see me this way. So, and hold it where you can. You know, if you're, you're only here because of your hips, that's okay. Don't punish yourself. Just keep moving like this. Good. Where you can. Slowly, you'll find that the movement will come up. All right? And it will come over your shoulder, like that. Okay? So it's there. The next is to turn. Hold on to your back. But you still have your leg over your shoulder. Or hold on to your, your hand, onto your left foot, rest your right, your left hand down, and you slowly are bringing it in a movement over your shoulder. You look towards your right. That's the full extended pose. And eventually, I have a harder time with my, my left leg. Can you bring it over the hips? You bring it over. See, I can't quite stretch that much. But I don't want you to think that, oh, yes, I'm flexible, etc. It's not true. All of this comes. I keep on saying, don't give up. All of this comes with the more movement that you bring into your body. So now let's bring our legs together. These are the surrender pose. Bring your arms under your legs, hold them onto your feet and just rest like this. And breathe. And if this is comfortable, you're going to slowly, 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 slowly bring yourself further down. The full, the full turtle is with your arms splayed in back and your legs out. This is called a surrender pose. And just that you know, when I began, I was like this. I couldn't surrender anymore. I, had, I was so rigid in my body. So... Is what happens when you get a couple of hard knocks in your life is that um, you start understanding that when life is wanting to, when life pushes you around, there's a reason for it. And it's surrendering and it's accepting what is happening in your life today as opposed to what you wanted to happen and started starting to understand that everything is for you. Everything that happens in your life is for you. And you can, when you start accepting that, you'll see the flexibility also in your in your body because it's not very easy to be except everything that happens to us now open your legs out okay straighten yourself again turn to the right uh, face your right foot and slowly bring yourself down where you can looking forward good there you go While I'm going forward, I'm trying to keep my two pin bones down on the floor. That's not so easy. Okay. And then you come up, turn to the left, and do the same. These side stretch are things you should be doing. You should do every, every day. If I don't do this, I get stiff. Now, rest yourself. 
with your elbow on your knee, like that. If that's enough for you, leave it at that. If it's comfortable, bring your hand down and you can bring your elbow onto the floor and your left arm up. Open and stretch your hand like that. So you become a conduit between the sky and the earth. Probably feeling the stretch here. And also activate both feet. So you don't have just one foot dropped here or one foot like this. So you're, you're present in all of your body. And once you're like this, bring your hand forward, okay? Try to follow it and in the direction of your foot. Like that. If this is all you could do, stay that way. And slowly, I can't do this. I know people can look up in the ceiling. I have too much restriction here, but maybe one day. And what's the challenge is breathing when you're in a tight pose. Because the, the breath is like the fuel that brings the flow of energy into the parts of the body where there are the restrictions, where are which are where the, the tensions are that are holding, they're like knots in a sweater. It's the fascia of the body. Now I'm bringing my, my um, elbow down onto the ground, right hand up, stretching the hand up, I was taught to bring my fingers like this. I prefer doing a spread. It, I find that that brings more of awareness up into the tips of my fingers as well. Also, I spread my fingers when I have them on the ground. Mm -hmm. And you want to bring forward where you can or over your foot. And slowly look up. Good. Back up again. Ah, move yourself out and slowly crawl yourself forward where you can, keeping the movement as the lower part of the body. Okay. And come where you can down. I have sand on my mat. There you go. Movement comes on the out-breath, not on the in-breath. Wonderful. Oh. Bring your legs in. Plant your feet. Bring yourself forward. And bring your hands around into a frog. Put our hands flat. Look toward your hands. Stretching. I'm going to do something different today. Get my hair straight. This is so pretty with the, the Ginshu beach behind me. This is when you're going to be resting your, your hands on the ground. And you rest your knees against, I'm going to do it like this so you could see it again. You rest your knees against my hands. And this is all it is. Just going to be very carefully holding yourself up. This is a balance pose more than anything. It's called the crow. Okay? And try it with lifting one foot or lifting the other. If you're feeling uncomfortable, what you want to do is you might be able to put a pillow or something in front of you in case you go forward. But the crow pose, you'll find, is not so difficult once you get it more of a trust pose. So the, the pose is that. I 
And this is it, it's rather than strength, is more of a trust pose, holding yourself on your on your hands. Okay. And then come back down again. That's it. And rest. Very good. And now we're going to be slowly slowing down. Bring your feet together up into the tabletop. I'll do a tabletop sideways so you can see. Up as much as you can. Bring your up, 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 like this. Just like that. While you're in the tabletop, left leg up, and then right leg. Good, and then forward. Resting them where you can, stretch. While we're here, we want to roll your back and do a couple of rolls uh, like that. This is also a trust pose of rolling as much as you can. Round your back. And this trust of rolling back. Okay. Once we're on the floor, hold your feet up so that they're kissing the ceiling. If this is comfortable, leave this just like this. If this is all you can do, that's already the stretch. Okay. Or slowly bring your straightened legs over your body into the plow. Either hold your back or you interlace your fingers on the ground and you can balance yourself. Okay, straighten yourself out. This pose always tells me how I, if I'm taking on too many problems of others on my shoulders. If I am, I can't do this pose. The next thing to do with this pose is to relax your legs now. And you squeeze your knees onto your ears. Support your back. Come up into the candle or the shoulder pose. You can. Ten breaths. Good. 
and then you can roll down. I actually prefer to come back, go into the half bridge, that, and from the half bridge, or you roll yourself back and slowly, 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 bring your feet down. Slowly, 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 straighten them, straighten them, and come down. Activate your core. You come down, good. And your feet up, into, up, into the half bridge. Now, when you're doing a half bridge, the movement is not just a half bridge like that. You're wanting to roll your way down. Okay, and then you roll your way up. It's here, okay? Roll, it comes all from the core. Roll up. Okay, roll. And roll up. Roll back down again. Well done. Or if you're comfortable, you can do the full bridge, which I like doing. Full bridge up like that. Yeah, stretch, stretches of places that you didn't even know existed and from that just relax in Shavasana is an essential pose. An integration pose. Keep lying down in Shavasana and while I talk to you. The reason Shavasana is so important is that you have all of your body resting on the earth. So you're able to recharge from all parts of your body. From the top of your head, feel down to your neck and your back, all the way down from your back, from your bum, right into the backs of your legs and the fronts of your legs and feel how the earth is supporting you on the ground so that you're resting and you recognize you're not floating in the air. We're actually having our feet on the ground. It connects you with nature. It allows you to recharge your batteries in ways that the mind just can't do. And it's a process of allowing. You want to allow yourself to go onto the ground like that. Right. That's it. Just resting, resting. Take a deep breath in and then out. In and then out. And now open your mouth wide, relax it wide, and relax it. And with a third, stretch your tongue out in a lion's breath. Yeah. 
that a lot only opens up the throat, but it also, it, it uh, any junk or bacteria behind the back of the throat, you'll be able to clean that out when you drink water, because you need to drink water after doing any type of exercise. Scrunch your eyes closed, relax. Scrunch them closed, relax. Scrunch them closed, relax. Roll them in three concentric circles to the right, to the left. Take your fingers and pull down on your ear lobes. That you'll find that that automatically releases some stress. Pull the ears out. All the parts of the ears. And give yourself an ear massage. Right? Good. And relax. Take your cheeks and blow them like you're blowing a trombone. Right? Left, right, and then also do a fish, pulling your cheeks in. Right. And then stretch your arms over your head and wriggle your fingers and toes. Stretch on a diagonal body always wants to move on the diagonal. You'll find that automatically when you're stretching, you want to do that. That opens up the heart. That puts movement into the torso automatically. Turn to the right. Make a pillow with your arms so you can rest your head on this pillow. And then slowly come up into a sitting position. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, follow the breath down, rest your hands on your knees. I like having my palms down because that encourages the energy to drop down into your center here. And I'm going to then put your hands together over your heart and we'll do three long alms. Notice where your alms are coming from this time, you'll find there's a difference. Oh. 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 Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.